What's going on, guys? We have a very special episode lined up for you guys today. We just got done interviewing a man by the name of Moron Pober. He's the founder of ABD Assets, and he's a former IDF soldier that stands for Israel Defense Forces. He has had extensive dealings with many entrepreneurial projects. He founded a company called iTips, a top 100 app in 100 stores around the world, including the U.S. App Store, Canada App Store, the U.K. App Store. He has carried out extensive consulting assignments with many companies, and his current business, ABD Assets, seeks to acquire equity stakes in companies with growth prospects. With a view to assisting them with their continued development, managerially, strategically, etc. He's a beast. We can't wait for you guys to check this out. Here we go. It appears that we are live. Awesome. Well, Moran, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, we're so excited to have you on. Now, it would be an absolute injustice to Boomer and I and maybe some of our listeners too, but if we didn't ask you this question to kick everything off, what was it like to be a part of the Israel Defense Forces and how on earth did you I'm transition? I'm so fascinated. How on earth did you transition to business from, from a military career? Uh, good, good question. Well, it, it's an easy question to answer, to be honest, because after I finished the Army, I basically realized that I can't have anyone telling me what to do. And I was like, no way I'm working for someone. I actually tried. I had a short term bartender uh, job, which I got fired after like two, three months. So I pretty much just realized enough for me. I don't want anyone to tell me what to do. I'm just going for business for myself. And that's pretty much it. And uh, as for the army experience, um, I definitely I think I, I really grew up as a person. Um, you get to the army, you go to the army as a kid, as a 18 years old um, kid, and you finish as a 21, almost 22 years old uh, man, you could say. I learned tons of things like uh, responsibility, leadership, accountability, discipline. Um, so lots of traits that I have now, I guess I could say came from there. And also some of my best friends, people who I really call family right now are um, from that period, so it's a great period. At the same time, if you if I had the option, I'll probably go, if I had the option and not live in the U.S. back then, I'll probably just go to college or something and party. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you you said you served in the uh, in the military in the army for uh, three to four years here. I, I'm curious, um, was that something that you chose to do? Was it something that you were kind of forced into? And why didn't you continue a military career? Um, and instead, you went into business. Mm -hmm. So it's three years. Um, it's mandatory for every Israeli guy. Um, you just got to go to the Israeli military. It's not something I can control. Um, so I had to go do my three years. And after that, I just realized it's not something I wanted to continue. Um, if you want to continue in, a, in your career in the army, you can if you want. But for me, it's just not something that I wanted. Yeah. And so... Uh... I would assume that all of the disciplinary tactics that you were taught in the military, that some of those have to shine through um, throughout your entrepreneurial career. What are some of those uh, disciplines that you that you use from the military in your business uh, life day to day? I, th I think the biggest thing is just um, discipline and responsibility with yourself. So if you're saying even to yourself that you're going to do something, you just go and do that. There, there's no other option. Um, you can say, hey, I'm going to do that, and you're not going to do that just because um, bad, circumstance, bad, bad things could happen. So I think that's the biggest thing. Just realize, hey, here's what I need to do. Here's the mission. Here's what I have to do, and let's just do that. And yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's definitely the, the biggest thing. I guess waking up earlier be became easy for me um i got no problem to wake up early <laughs> and i think that's that's from there um but yeah pretty yeah, in the end of the day though i think you could you could get those traits just by going to business i don't think it's a must to be in in such a, a, a place to to learn those things i think you could learn those things somewhere else but it, it's a great learning curve or um a, a path that every kid i think could gain a lot from but at the same time you learn a lot just by being in business as well by failing in business by learning there um so 
I think it's a great experience. I'm, I'm not regretting it. I think I got a lot from it. At the same time, it, it, I, I did it because I have to. It's not like I believe in the army and war and all that stuff. If, if I had the option, obviously, like I said, I'd just go and party. <laughs> so, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> i just go and party. And now are you are you located in the United States now? Um, no. So my home base is still in, in, uh, in Israel. Oh, great. And Yeah, but we're doing business all over the world. So we're looking at businesses. Pretty much oh, all over the place, UK, US, Canada, Australia, yeah. Awesome, awesome. I met a, I met a gal in, uh, in Thailand who was from Israel, and <laughs> it was it was so it was so fascinating being able to talk to her. Just the experience, the the differences in the culture and everything are just wildly amazing. Um, but Moran, I've got. I've got a question, and you, you can you can deflect it or you can answer it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to kind of to build up your, your your character on the episode here, and ask before we get into more business talk, what has been maybe the craziest or the coolest experience that you've had in the uh, in the Israel mil military? Like it could be in training, uh, maybe you've seen combat, maybe you've seen whatever you've seen, but something that like really jolted your adrenaline and something that you'd remember forever um so i, I wasn't in combat but i did i, I think it, and something that you'll probably really going to be excited about is the fact that i had um a, a gun a m16 with me for three years so it was a lot it's like your it's like your baby you got to go with it everywhere right so yeah if you go home to your family, it's with you. Um, obviously, if you're in your base, it's with you. So I think that's that's something really interesting. The first time you take that gun and you go home with it, um, <laughs> it's very unique, you could say, to go back to your family. And now, I mean, you, you left as a kid and now you get back a few weeks later with a, a gun that, uh, you know, could do, could do very bad things. So um, I think that's something that is... It is just not something normal, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'm I'm curious. So I don't know if you're familiar with a man by the name of Jocko Willink, but he's an ex special forces from uh, the United States, and he his main business now is actually consulting other big companies and applying what he learned in the military into their corporate structures, into their business structures with discipline, self-responsibility, et cetera. And he's helping these businesses grow. Um, do you think without the military, you would still be in this position today? Or do you think business was kind of just ingrained in you? Or do you think this is something that you saw other companies or a company that you could start maybe uh, lack in the marketplace and then you brought that there? Mm, that's a, a really good question. I think I... I did have some, I did have some kind of a business mind since 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 I remember myself because I used to sell stuff on eBay from the age of sixteen or seventeen. I used to sell flowers in corners, so I, I did have that trait. At the same time, I think that the army gave me a lot of certainty and confidence in in my path that basically anything that I'll go and do, I could be successful at it just because. Um, you learn things from zero in the army as well. And you learn the fact that if you're just being uh, committed enough and persistent enough and just stay on track, um, you're going to progress. So I think it definitely helped me. It, it, um, if things would be different, uh, you can never know. You know, I mean, who knows? If I didn't have the army, maybe I'll, I had a nine to five job now. But I really can't answer that. I know that I'm really happy with where I am right now. And I'm so glad that I don't have a boss. So I'll end and say that, yeah. I love it. Now, when when times get dark and maybe there there's a slow in business, or um, maybe you just you your your vibe as as a person, you're just a little off, I should say. What is one thing that you resort to when you feel that things are in the gutter, or maybe you've got a lack of motivation, or um, when when you're just in a funk? Is there anything that you do to bring yourself out and then back into an action taking uh, mode? Mm -hmm. That's a, 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 so I think one thing to realize is that no matter how you feel, your actions, you can take action no matter how you feel. So you can feel depressed, you can feel sad, you can feel excited and, um, and passionate about something. It doesn't change anything. It, it doesn't change the fact that you can still take action. I really believe that you can take action no matter how you feel. 
Um, and it's just by the fact that you decided in advance that, hey, here's my mission, here's what I'm trying to accomplish, and here are the actions that I need to take, and I'm going to take them no matter what happens, no matter what, how I feel. It just, it just, there's no other way. That's what I'm going to do, period. Um, so I'd say that's a good mindset to have. At the same time, I do have my own rituals. I do meditate. I do other things to play with my subconscious mind. I do have, you could say, even energy coaches who help me to go back to my subconscious mind, to my childhood memories and traumas. And I really believe in all those things. And I obviously read tons of books on self-development. Um, so I'm very into that word. At the same time, I do understand that you just need to take action because, I mean, so many people out there nowadays, they talk about go read books. They, they talk about reading books, um, taking seminars, all that stuff. And there's nothing wrong about it. I think it's a must for everyone. But I think people forget the fact that you only get results by actually executing, by actually taking action. And I think it's a, it's a really very important thing to, to emphasize to people just because I see so many people out there who think that if they're going to read another book, um, it's going to move them forward toward the goals. And many times it's it just going to um, stop them. Is there a reason why you decided to enter the tech space? I mean, iTips, my guess is just a, a booming app and maybe it's one of your top apps or the best app that you've helped design and put in the marketplace. But is there a reason why you went the tech route versus any other entrepreneurial route? Um, I think it was really by coincidence, to be honest. Um, I knew some people who made good money with apps and I was like, okay, that uh, it felt like it's not that complicated. I went to that, to that world of apps when the app store was pretty new. It wasn't as competitive as now. And I saw an opportunity. I saw this, that app in, in the ranked really high in the, in the app store that did what my app eventually did. And what I've done is basically I, I just found out someone who, who have a similar code. I bought that code from them. And I uh, pretty much just made it better. I, I got developers and designers and marketers to promote that app in a better way. Um, you could say it's coincidence. You could say it's market research. You could say that I, my network, I knew people in my network that made good money with apps. So probably that's what led me to this world in the first place. Um, but yeah, you can never know. I, I just went with my guts. I think that's the best answer to tell, to be honest. And when did you find yourself in a credible position to begin consulting um, with these higher level companies? Because first, first thing that happens in an entrepreneur's career is that he's got to break through. Um, and then I guess you'd come to the realization that now he can provide value. So when was that turning point um, in your career when you said, okay, I've got the results. Now I can focus on consulting and coaching others to do, um, to, to grow their businesses. Yeah. So with the app business, I had, uh, what you said, devastating, devastating scenario. My app ranked really high, made lots of money. And then one day Apple came, um, and basically said that I can't upload a new version for my app. And the reason was that um, they got their own version for that app. I used to have tips. We just did tips for iPhone, basically um, just, just cool tricks and trips to use your iPhone more productively. And iPhone, if you have iPhone right now, you have a default app that comes up come with your iPhone. And as soon as that happened, Apple told me, hey, sorry, you can't do that, which um, got me in a really bad scenario because few months earlier, I got an offer to buy that business from me, which I didn't sell. And we could talk about more about that. But basically, I lost revenue, like all my revenues in one day were just wow. gone. And um, I had my own network and people knew about my success and they just came to me and, and, and asked for help. And I didn't believe in taking any fees for my help. But what I said is that I just told my friends or the people who approached me back then is, hey, um, I'm happy to help you. But instead of taking any fee right now, I want to translate the growth in your company into equity. And that's what eventually led me to helping businesses and to the world uh, that I'm in right now, which is um, seeking to buy and invest in businesses. Mm. And let's flash back to when you had an offer from someone or a company to buy your business. 
Um, can mm-hmm. we talk numbers really quick? What, was it something that you know you had to really sleep on because that money could have done a lot for you back then, um, or was it something where the offer wasn't good enough? Or is it, I mean, were you just building something that you didn't even want to sell? You wanted to to keep building. It was your baby, and yeah, uh, what so- was that like? Yeah, so for me back then, I mean, I could tell you that the app made, um, I think the best days, it made like five, ten grand profit a day in their best days. Um, so you can assume what, what kind of offers in, in the plus above seven figure offer. But what happened to me back then is then, and that's a lesson that I learned obviously over time, is I was thinking that the business is going to run forever. I didn't know that anything was going to happen. Obviously, I thought, hey, I'm making money now. I'm probably going to make money in 20, 30 years from now. And um, I guess you could you could blame some of the, the, the books about passive income and stuff like that. I was like, cool, I got my passive income. I'm good now. Let's go chill. Let's, let's travel around the world and do whatever I want. Um, but what I realized is that and I think that's a big lesson that I learned a few years later from some of my mentors is the fact that the best time to sell a business is now, no matter what. And no matter what you're saying to yourself that you need to, the reason that you think you need to keep running that business is probably the reason you need to sell that business. Because this that same reason is the same reason that you can sell to a potential buyer and tell them about that opportunity. Um, and the, the best thing to do, the, the, the reason to sell your business is just because of the fact that you can have nice capital events. And that's some of my mentors say that's the only way to build wealth is to have equity in transactions and just sell businesses. And do you regret it when you look back at it? Do you regret not selling or were the lessons and everything that came out of it worth, um, you know, at, at, you know, in hindsight, looking back and maybe that was uh, that was a mistake? Mm-hmm. No, so I don't regret it at all, to be honest. I think that, first of all, I learned a ton and the deal structure back then just wasn't that exciting other than the fact that I had employees that I wanted to someone to take care of them because, I mean, that business was like my baby. So it was really important to me that someone will come and make sure they're safe and that wasn't the case. So I'm, I'm, I don't regret it at all. I learned a lot um, and I know that... Yeah, I think it's just a, a great lesson for, for any business owner to to, to understand that um, no business will will stay forever. I don't care what business you have, you're going to have your ups and downs. And just just make your decisions knowing that as well. I think it's really important. Do you, do you think that the lessons that you've learned um, with selling your business, do you think any of those kind of carry over to – the the principles that you use to consult these other companies so um it's all experience if you will do you use your own personal experiences to share with these companies to to keep in their best interest Mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. so i I always talk about that's that's the only reason people take me to work with them it's because of my experience i tell them hey here's what i've done here's here's my experiences here's my successes here's my failures Here's what I believe you should do. Um, you could take it or leave it. I believe that could help you. And if you if you believe it as well, let's do it. And how do you decide on what company that you're going to build next, what project you're going to take on next, what app you're going to create? Do you look at the marketplace and see there's a gap where value just could be filled and then you go and fill that? Or is it something that kind of stems from what you desire and more or less from like what you're passionate about and then you put it in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. So right now I'm in a different position. Back then it was literally, like I said, pretty much a coincidence. I just found an app that have a potential. I bought it and I pretty much just fixed it and made it better. Nowadays, I'm, I'm just looking at tons of deals to potentially, of businesses to potentially buy. And the reason for me to buy those businesses is mostly just a matter of cost of capital and how good the deal is financially. I realized and I found out that business in the end of the day is about money, is about more money coming in than money going out. And at least personally, just because I'm so ADD, I like to be involved in many different sectors and I like to learn about different sectors. So at least at the moment, just because of my own choices, lifestyle choices, and just day-to-day choices because I found out it's more fun. I just look out for businesses that I can buy 
and I don't care which sectors they're at. I just care about um, the, the numbers that I can get the business at. So when do you find it uh, a proper time to divert your attention from, say, a business that you're consulting with or working very, very hands-on with to, uh, to, to direct your attention to learning about a new sector or undergoing a new uh, business project? Yeah, so at the moment, I'm not really consulting businesses. I'm just owning businesses. And that's something I think is very important to, to emphasize as well. When I started, and so the app company was probably the last company I had that I managed the day to day. And what I realized after that, and that's one of the biggest lessons I learned, is that I don't want to run businesses. I don't want to manage businesses. I want to own businesses. And that's a very different thing. There's a very big difference between running a business day to day and owning a business. I realize that I don't want to deal with menial, daily, repeatable stuff. I want to be involved with the kind of like be the um, the owner at the back who's giving strategic advice and taking control or um, being responsible for the higher vision activities. And that's what I'm focused on right now. That's why we're looking for businesses that's already got existing management team in place. And I don't want to run those businesses just because, first of all, I believe there are people who do that better than me. And I, like I said, I just, I want to do, I just found it more fun to be a shareholder, to be an owner of a business versus being a day to day manager. And what does a day in your life look like, Moran? I'm curious because, and, and I want to know the differences between when you first started your entrepreneurial journey, when I'm mm -hmm. sure money wasn't, um, you know, as free flowing as it is now. Um, how, how has everything changed? So like, what was the day in your life like when you first got started versus a day in your life today? And what are the differences, if any? Yeah, I, th I think the biggest thing is, first of all, the lifestyle. So back then, I, I had to be involved in everything, right? So anything from running marketing campaigns to hiring people to um, dealing with financing to even take care of design and development and, and everything. And nowadays, it's just about um, being the behind the scene owner. So my day is pretty much involved. I'm pretty much just on, on the phone all day, either on, on, on calls or on in meetings. Um, usually talk to either, uh, I talk to tons of business owners who potentially want to sell their business to me, or I talk to um, potential financiers or from different banks or financial institutions or VC firms or private equity firms that potentially want to invest in deals that I'm looking at. Or, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all my day, to be honest. Um, I have sometimes like 10, 15 calls with just business owners who potentially want to sell their business. And I'm just, I'm just learning about their business, learning about why they want to sell, if they want to sell, learning about their business, their sector, and just making decisions eventually if I want to make an offer to buy that business. And at least personally, I enjoy it much more just because the fact that, first of all, I can do those phone calls and, and meetings wherever I want, pretty much. And it just, it just really fun. The fact that you get the chance to talk to so many business owners in so many different sectors, and those business owners are so passionate about their business. Like, I had a call yesterday with a business owner who's running his business for more than 20 years. It's in an industry that I don't know nothing about, but you should hear that person. I mean, he's so passionate about, he's so excited about this business. And it just, uh, I mean, I love that just to, to get that energy from those people who love their business so much and to give them the opportunity to, to have a, a nice, fair exit and to take care of their employees and, and heritage and brand that they build. Um, I just really enjoyed it right now versus at least, at least personally with my, with my personality, I just really enjoy, um, being that person who just call the shots versus that person who managed the small day to day details. Now, Moran, before we dive into the jam session here, I've got one speedy, uh, speedy question for you. And it's, it's the, it's a one word answer here. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about these business owners and how you, you're structuring or you're setting up meetings uh, to discuss whether you can potentially take over their business or not. What is one word you think that these business owners display that ultimately influences your decision? If you could sum that up into one word. <laughs> one word? Um, motivation, I'd say. 
motivation. Yeah. I love it. So now we're going to dive into the jam session. And the first question that we ask typically is if you were selected to give a commencement speech to a group of graduating college students. Now, these are a little bit different. This is not your average student. This is an entrepreneurial minded group of young individuals here. What would you place your uh, your commencement speech on? Um, that's, I can have, I can have more than one word for this, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> definitely, um, I'd say think really well what you want to, or where you want to be in 10, 20 years and find that person who's already doing that and do whatever it takes to learn from that person. And uh, obviously I'm not the per- first person who's saying that, but it's so crucial and do whatever it takes to just take the same actions and do whatever it takes to be as similar as you can to that person. I mean, talk like him, think like him, dress like him, have the same belief as him. And no matter what, mm. don't quit. At the mm. same time, mm. I'll, I'll add and say that no matter what you pick, don't forget to enjoy your journey. In the end of the day, if you don't enjoy your day to day, and that's, I'll come back to some of my businesses that I had, like even with the app company, I don't care how much money you make eventually money won't make you happy yes at some point i think that there's um um, they say that above 70 grand or so a year uh, if you make more than that above that you won't become more happy so i think it's really important for you to just focus on happiness from day one what will just ask yourself questions like what will get you excited today what will make you happy today um what's going to be fun today i think if you'll take actions based on those questions your life's going to be very very different and you're just going to enjoy things so much more and i think it's crucial really really crucial because um in the end of the day all all you got is just today so just just learn to enjoy it that was one of the most powerful answers that i think we've had um out of (laughs) i mean a hundred plus interviews here um thank you (laughs) if if you had a genie in a bottle and he could grant you three things and you could not be denied those three things right now in this moment, what would they be? Wow. You're asking really tough questions. Three things. <laughs> <laughs> three things that I can um, pick. Um, they can be anything. No matter anything what. Anything you want, man. You want a Ferrari? Like He's limitless. delivering it. <laughs> we got so, – so just to preface this, yeah. yesterday we got to – uh, or someone said, experience different dimensions. Like, wow. there it was a very spirit. Like, I mean, it goes from a piece of sushi to a Lamborghini uh. to different dimensions to uh, all around health for the family. Like, the the sky is the limit here. I love it. Um, wow. I wish I had time to think about it because that's really really good question. Um, I'd say, first of all, I wish. I think if I could get happiness or I don't think even happiness is the right word, um, gratitude to everyone around me. So everyone around me will feel more grateful about their life. I think I'd love to have that or more grateful. I th- I'd say if I could make everyone around me, so let's make it to everyone around me, if I could make them more grateful and if I could make them successful, uh, I take those two, like those two wishes. Um, and the third thing would just be something like, um, I'd say, wow, that's a good one. I'd say I'd wish, I wish that, um, um, how could I, I, I say the right way? But there's, there's a sentence I live by that hell on earth would be to me the person you could have been. So I wish I, I'd have the, the other option, if that makes sense, to me the person I could have been or to be the yeah. person I can, I can be, yeah. If you were to pinpoint Moran your fuel, so mm-hmm. and really deep down, like just really at your core, what would mm-hmm. that be? Like what fuels you? If you had to pick one thing, what fuels you daily to just keep pushing and achieving what you want to achieve? Um, helping others. Period. Yeah. I don't think I don't think there's anything in the world that makes me so driven. Helping your loved ones and just helping people in general. Um, yeah, I don't think that there's anything compared to that. I love it. If you were to give yourself one piece of advice, maybe to your 10-year younger self, what would that piece of advice be? And what, what moment of your life would that be in? 
Um, I'd go to any moment back and I'll, I'll just say to myself, I'll probably tell myself a few words. Um, relax, be grateful, and just have fun. That's all. Mm. And let, let's, uh, let's wrap with this one here. Um, when you first started your business, how would you say, like, what was, what was your top value? So out of the military, when you started your entrepreneurial career, I mean, for a lot of us, when we first get started, it's like, we just want to put food on the table. We want to pay for the bills. Yeah. But after all mm -hmm. that stuff gets taken care of, like, how has your hierarchy of values changed from the beginning to now? Mm -hmm. So I'd say in the beginning, all I wanted is freedom. I wanted to have the freedom to, I guess, be where I want, when I want, et cetera. And, uh, but I think over time, as you said, as soon as you make more money, you care less about yourself and you just look for your next why or your next motivation. And now it's just um, finding freedom or um, just helping others. I think it, it comes back to that. Mm, I love it. Well, Moran, we are coming in for a landing on this episode here but we want to offer you actually we want you to take the time to give yourself a little bit of a plug where can our listener find more about you get involved in what you're doing or just say what's up in uh, in this grand world here how can we do that yeah so for sure so at the moment my focus is about looking for businesses to buy so if you have an existing business that you're looking to sell um, or I know I know a few people want to wanted to get into this world as well. They message me. So just if you want to learn how to buy a business or you have a business you want to sell, I'm, I'm happy to have a conversation. So just feel free to email me personally. It's uh, Moran at my name is M O R R A N at A B D Assets dot com. Love it. All of that's going to be in the show notes, guys. And uh, so that's that's the the way. We'll wrap here. I love it. We'll wrap here. Let's Thank you it. so much for uh, what time is it uh, where you're at here? Moran? It's um, 8.30 p.m. here. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, thank you for doing a late night interview with us here. No worries. Um, it was special. I mean, it's morning for us over here. So the time difference is pretty significant. But that's crazy. This goes down in my books. Moran is one of the one of the most insightful interviews we've done for for many of reasons. So thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us here yeah. today. Thank you very much. I really, really enjoyed it. And it was very, very unique. So uh, awesome. thank you very much. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. That was a really fun podcast. I mean, Whoa. A, a great. Dude, can, like the insight. Oh, amazing. Came from nowhere. Like, and he's just like, he's just, soft, chill. I, I imagine we're on. <laughs> I, ima <laughs> I imagine him just chilling in his loft, dude, in a robe on his phone, just like laying. Grapes being The value. Wow. Down. Grapes he's being fed value. to him. But. While he's dropping value for everyone listening right now. Guys, let me tell you something super quick. If you want to start a podcast, the best way to do it is to head to startmypod.com. Um, it's kind of the thing that sponsor issues the, sh the show. You know what I mean? We, don't we really sponsor have, our own show. Right. So, so we don't have any paid sponsors or anything like that. This is, this is what we do. Guys, head to startmypod.com for just our best comprehensive just video action guide on how to start your podcast launch it quick yeah. get into the marketplace i think you'd really love it and boomer let's just say i'm a listener right now and i haven't left a five-star review or a comment yet what are and, you doing first off and i want to get my hands on a copy of the million dollar day well let me let me ask you a question tyler do you, do you like procrastinating i hate procrastination you, you hate procrastination how, okay so what kind of how many hours of procrastination do you think you got built up right now um, I want to say a good... Too bad. That's We're going to wipe it all away right now. Wow, okay. You just got to leave, take 30 seconds to leave a comment and a five-star rating in the iTunes store. It literally takes 30 seconds. What do you like about the show? Drop that in there and guess what? If you leave your Instagram handle, uh, and if you don't have an Instagram handle, it's 2017, get with the times, uh, shoot us a message on Facebook, but leave your Instagram handle in the comment and guess what? I'm going to send you a book that's going to wipe away all of your procrastination, Tyler. So Boom. you no longer have to worry. It's just straight pr productivity from, from now here on. on out. Here we yep. go. From my door to yours, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode we are we're out of here. here. We're out of here. Peace. Peace. Wait, Later. Later.